It was 94. Are we rolling? We're rolling. Podcast 94. Start date 94. 516, Tuesday, April 30th. Man, I had I heard some crazy shit today. I was going to tell you about. What you forgot? It'll come to me. <laughs> it's something. So I, I here's the crazy shit. Did, do you know where you know the you know the practice of having garden gnomes? You know where that came from? No, but I see. Have you seen cast iron garden gnomes? Uh-uh. Holy shit! There's a whole world of cast ironness out there, and it's fucking expensive. And the concrete shit, old concrete shit. Oh yeah, but fucking it's... ridiculous for fucking con. You know? Do you know how many motherfuckers like asshole kids just went by and just smashed that Those shit and threw it off of bridges and shit? Where'd it come from? So in the 1500s. Oh, I like it. Yeah, 1500s. This is where the garden gnomes came from. In the 1500s, the well-to-do all had gardens. So, like, when you would go to the rich, you know, think about Hearst Castle and all yeah, those places. Yeah, where all the pineapples They have came all from. the crazy gardens, Finials. right? They have all these crazy gardens. It became fashionable to hire a local. To stand out there for the crows? To be a fucking hermit in your garden. And you would have, when your friends would come over, you would walk them through the garden and he would creepily come out of some fucking hole or something and do some crazy shit. And the crazier your hermit was, the cooler you were. Oh, God. We gotta get some fucking hermits. And they had like, like seven it. year... They had the seven year contract that I they wanted, would sign. I've always wanted to build like a fucking hobbit. A little hobbit little hobbit, hole. yeah. A little hobbit hole. We could totally do that, too. Because the hill out front is a hill. We could cut right in there and just put a door that rolls. This is what we do. We dig a hole big enough to put in... The lawnmower shed that Tyler's living in. And then we just bring the whole thing here. <laughs> bring the shed here and put, bury it into the ground? Put it in the ground. Make a nice little entrance. And then he... he I'm sure he would be happy to do that. And he would actually be happy. So Whatever I have to tell you has to do with... It's, it's the 1600s and modern day. It started in the... Six, I cannot fucking for the life of me... Remember what... Like, it's, it's right there, too. And then Spearco said something. I heard Jack say something today, too, and I can't remember what the fuck it is. Um, listening to the beginning of Podcast 91, John, have you tried those little vinyl moving men? They are a foam top with vinyl bottoms. They are, they are one of the few things advertised on TV that will work like they say they do. Me and the guy that trained me were able to move his 1,500-pound cast iron stove across a very thick carpet like it was nothing using them. You can find them in every Lowe's and Home Depot. I'm sure Walmart also. You know what that reminds me of? That thing you hold and it has like those four balls that roll on your Uh shoulder and shit. I'll bet it's something like that. Regarding podcast 81 about the Sumerians, the pyramids were a spaceport. My dad was a physicist for various physics labs and NASA, and I've heard stories about Bronze Age ruins on Mars, nukes, etc. Shit that will blow your mind. He can read Sumerian and subscribes the theory Zachariah Sitchin put out in the 1970s regarding the Anunnaki. I heard Art Bell fucking... Art Bell actually had Sitchin on the show, I want to say. Um, I remember listening to that, as a matter of fact. Um, and that's where I heard um, the Anunnaki uh, being humanoid race that created humans. JPL, Jet, which is Jet Propulsion Laboratories, has teams that Photoshop a lot of pictures before the public gets them. Furthermore, the company that owns the unmanned vehicle cameras has the right to any photos for up to a year before they have before they have to release them. Keep up the podcast. That's uh, that's what a lot of that. There's a there's a. YouTube video called The Bible Explained Like a Boss, or The Bible Explained in 30 Minutes, or whatever. And that's basically what it talks about, is that the the creators in the Egyptian, you know, the Egyptians started as one person, and then it was split and became two, and then they had children, and the children had children. And that's basically what it, it says, is that when you go back and actually read the Bible, the original Bible, um... That, that they were those were aliens. They came down and created man. Call it God. Call it whatever. Whatever you want to call it. Um, and that's that. That video is great. Now I Tad came over. Um, 
Tad Fuller, and he came over here and hung out. We talked for till midnight Saturday night, and uh, we were talking everything, man, religion, all kinds of shit. And he's like, I, and he starts quoting all this scripture and stuff. I'm like, how the fuck do you know that? But why do you know that? He's like, I, I read the Bible. Like when I go home, I don't hang out with a lot of people. I just have read the Bible front to back sideways. Like he's quoting, I'm like, <laughs> like John 3 16, you know, so the Lord forgave his only forgotten son. Well, you know, like everybody knows that, but like he's quoting some shit. Like you didn't even know that fucking book was in the Bible. And I go, and he goes, the Bible I read was published in 1600 and 36 or whatever. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's part of what that 16, that's why I have 1600 in my head. He's like, the Bible is, you know, the Bible I read was published in 1600. I'm like, you have a Bible? Where do I get it? He's like, no, the Bible I have was published in 1600. Or what, you know, fucking yeah. crazy. Like, right. has this Bible. And he's like, it was written by so-and-so. And if the Catholic Church would dig him up in the 1800s, dig his body up to burn him, it tells me that there's something they don't want fucking out there, and his Bible is the Bible I should be reading. I'm like, all right, that makes a lot of sense. Where do I get one of these Bibles? Like, <laughs> we got it. We got it. Tad, we're gonna have to pull your Bible apart and photocopy. It. Yeah, like, do something. I'm, yeah. I gotta see this, you know. So, John, a lot of news lately about restoring voting rights to felons. But what about gun rights? I think old Bernie forgot that little fact. Which, by the way. I think that is the purpose of taking rights away after someone has paid their debt to society, like Duke Cunningham. With a felony conviction, he lost his military retirement pay. That's what I think is absolutely insane. He served his country. I, I don't even know who the fuck Duke Cunningham is. I thought, I hear Duke Cunningham. Wasn't he a politician? Are you sure he lost his retirement? I don't, I don't think that, I mean, I, I, I'm, I don't think that's true. I mean, you may be completely 100% right. I just know that like we have given silver stars medal of honors to individuals who were non-parolable felons like we've gone to jail and we're like hey thank you for your service bro <laughs> and anything above a silver star you get a anything above a silver star you get an annuity you actually get paid so when somebody's you know if you got a friend running around with a silver star the navy actually permanent well for the marine corps Department of the Navy actually gives them a check every month for that. Same thing with Medal of Honor winners. So I would be interested to know if that's true. Now, I could see them saying, while well, you're in custody, but that doesn't even make sense. I don't know. Maybe you might be right. I have to look it up. Um, good evening. This is Jamie Betty. I was attempting to reach Dakota in regards to availability of a room he had offered me if I make it to Tennessee. I would love an opportunity to come work with for SOE. I have the money to pay for... What the fuck was that? It was a quarter. Fell it's in my what's pocket. it made of? That sounds like a weird quarter. It's a regular quarter. Made of whatever... Carrying around gold quarters? Whatever non-traditional metals are that they're using to fake us out and how much it's worth. It's this 1960s epoxy in the bomb shelter. Could be. I would love the opportunity to come work with for SOE. John, I have the money to pay for my flight hotel and rental car i can go ahead and book my flight can i go ahead and book um jamie dakota hasn't worked here for eight weeks eight weeks six, eight. Weeks. six weeks um i would say that at this point we had a disagreement on how things should be um i would say that that is probably a toxic environment for you to live in and work here um number three four five six and all the way through 17 um i have told you many times um, you need to come here. Like, you were supposed to come here for a party. You were supposed to come here two years ago. You were supposed to come here a year ago. Um, you gotta come here and meet us before you fucking fly here and move all your shit here or drive here or whatever it is. You need to come here and be here. Plus, what is it you're coming here to do? Um, you need to come here and see what the fuck's going on. The best time to do that for you. For you personally, I, I don't hire chicks to work and do my dude jobs, and I don't hire dudes to sit on my floor with my ladies and sew. You need to come here and meet us and see what's going on, 
um, before you plan to come here. I've been hearing about you coming and working here. Unless I have you confused with somebody else, I've been hearing about, aren't you the chick from Arizona that's had like four different names on a Facebook page and pops up every six months on a YouTube page like you are right now using somebody else's account? Um, you might be the most awesome fucking valuable person in the world to my company, but the things you've done online show instability. Um, so you need, you just need to come here and like during a party, you were supposed to be here at the last party and you never showed up. That would have been a great time to come here and see what was going on. Get here a few days ahead of time. Um, so I would say, I would say no, do not just show up here um, unannounced. Um, I would say this is not the place to even be communicating. You, I have an email address, I have a website, I have Facebook, I have Instagram, I have MeWe, I have literally... Oh, contact them on MeWe. Do you, I have, do you yeah. get messages on MeWe? I don't Do people know, actually I don't message know. you on MeWe? I don't, that's a good question. There's probably a file sitting <laughs> somewhere <full. laughs> full of MeWe questions. I have literally like 24 methods to communicate with me and, and you've chosen this one. So, okay. um, send me a, send me a fucking email. <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, we'll see. Was watching podcast 86 video and it just skipped back by a half an hour. Anyways, Scully. What are your main thoughts on M14 as a designated marksman or sniper rifle and your opinion on semi-auto precision rifles in general? And do not care as long as it hits the target. Or do you not care as long as it hits the target? I, let me, I'll answer. I'm going to use my default um, PSG1. John always goes for the, the most expensive and outlandish gun that... It you just know, looked, 25 years ago, it I'll looked bet, like a laser gun. I'll bet the PSG-1, actually, in, in, in no shit, in no reality, I'll bet the PSG-1 has never been used to actually shoot at people. It was, it was. Oh, uh, it's never been used. I want to say GSG-9 had a, had a fucking um, CIGN or GSG-9 had a, a takedown on an airplane and they smoked a fool through, mm. the, through the airplane with it. Um, that, I think that was total PR. Or, or number two. What do you think, think my number two is? I don't know. I, I would say, I, I, you always go to the... Anything that can go in a Sage chassis. Oh, anything that goes in a Sage chassis. I have an actual Sage chassis. Anything that goes with in With an airsoft rifle yeah, in it. Yeah. Um, $7,000 stock with a fucking <laughs> airsoft rifle in it. The problem with an M14 is that it's... Uh, it's very temperamental. needs to be needs to be tuned all the time. Like if you really want good accuracy out of it, you need Tim LaFrance in your yeah, golf bag. You gotta really you gotta really keep it tuned. Is he alive? I believe he's still alive. Does he have it's, a Maserati still? Because the last I heard is Hayes was going over uh, that Tim closed all his stuff down, basically closed all his stuff down and started working at a Surefire's. Oh. Just so now kind Surefire's of Surefire's gonna Surefire's gonna steal all his designs. Kind of. Uh, you know, just kind of like he's retired and he's just over there and he was showing Chris he was, was showing true? Chris a bunch of stuff. Is it true they killed Phil Seaburger? Sure far? Don't, don't start that rumor. Yeah, I don't want to start that <laughs> I've never I mean I who know I <laughs> Phil Seaburger's like Jimmy Hoffa. He just kinda of disappeared. Um it just takes a lot to keep that gun running. There are semi automatic rifles out there on the market right now that are thousand you know, that in theory, or thousand-yard gun. So yeah, you can get a semi-automatic gun that'll do it. You just you have to pay more attention to a semi-automatic gun versus a bolt gun. So while while gas guns have been getting down to the minute, gas guns have been getting in that middle of angle area. You know, getting down into that middle of, minute of angle, kind of becoming that more precision fire weapon system. The reality is your bolt guns are getting you know sub quarter minute of angle. So you're always going to get a little better performance out of a bolt gun, but you get a gas gun that'll, you know, that'll fucking run the run the sniper course, no problem. I mean, even the shitty Mark 11s that we got, I would, I'd run that, I've, I've run that sniper school, um, just because of the size of the targets that we're shooting at. So, but do you really need a quarter minute gun to shoot at people? Like, because every, because most dudes asking about that, they're not thinking offensive. They're thinking hostage situation, right? Well, they're I mean, thinking, I'm going to shoot that dude. I'm going to shoot through his earlobe and here, get the hostage. Here's the biggest problem. So, for example, I'll just use SOTG. 
So when I was at SOTG, because because of the type of shooting that we were doing in support of the Force Recon Platoons, you had to have a minute of angle. You had to shoot a minute of angle. Now, me telling you that and you thinking you got this super sub-quarter minute of angle gun, in the type of environments that they were shooting at, a minute of angle is hard to obtain. And our minute of angle was out to 300 yards. So they so had to maintain... Inches. Had to maintain a minute of angle out to 300 yards. Um, I know, you know, there's a lot of there's going to be a lot of armchair commandos. They're going to be like, oh, no problem. Let me put a fucking five yeah. pound. Let me put a five pound simrad on you. Let me put you. Let me put you in a building in a fucking position that you've never shot in before. Or or, and, a, or a platform that might be moving. And just the stress of you're shooting a fucking live round. Onto a target site where there are actual people running around. Your people. Yeah, so um, it's not as easy as you think. We actually had guys that did not qualify, uh, would did not qualify to hold that minute of angle. What happened then? They're just not designated. As they just a shooter. didn't. Yeah, they couldn't. They couldn't be shooter. Still deploy though. Yeah, they'd still deploy. And then, so they're like the caddy. It, basically, they wingman. Basically, if they didn't qualify, they weren't allowed to shoot during. SOTG operations. When they went overseas, they still carried the forty and did all and did that. But they they couldn't support. So they couldn't the fire live bullets on true. Yeah, they just couldn't fire live bullets on true, which was a big deal though because the requirement was you had to deploy with eight sni eight qualified snipers. So you know the goal was to get. I remember doing a walkthrough and a line. A bunch of building, guys there, yeah. And you could see daylight coming through the building, which means some of those bullets didn't hit that trap. It was probably the force guys. They it was they oh, it was one hundred percent the force guys. They missed the they missed the difference was we were and I remember I remember seeing um I remember seeing a breach a shotgun breach that it breached the door just fine, but it also went out the building like yeah. it was out, it was it's there's loose. Some, there's some interesting like uh, and that that was downtown L A maybe downtown so downtown L A Delta. I'm sorry. Not Delta. Not Delta. No, Somebody. No, yeah, maybe. Yeah, not. What, what are they called? The unit. The unit well, came. I was gang banging with the unit. And they did. Uh, God, that's the funniest shit I'd ever seen when Sean did that shit. They did a. They did a. They did a hit on the <clears throat> Sears building. So, we had been using the Sears building for sniper shit for a long time. So we do our MSPF sniper stuff up there and do, you know, uh, cross street shooting and bullshit like that, and. And Dick, you know, Dick's taking me around, and he's like, Dick's taking me around, and the unit had just come through there, so the target frames were still up. Everything was still up, and they're taking us, you know, Dick's taking us through the building, and he goes, he goes, this is the one right here. And I'm like, what? He goes, do you see what's behind the, he goes, you see what's behind this target? And it was the, it's the, not the Ritz-Carlton, it was, it's a Hilton. That's just right across the street. Right. And he goes, I go, what up? What, what's going on? He goes, one left the building. One left the building. And we have no idea where it went. Like, uh -huh. they went over there and tried to be like, hey, what's up in room 252? You know, they just, they have no idea where that bullet went. But, interesting. Anyway, so. That's good shit. It just depends on what you, it depends and back, on. And back then, you could have. You could have a body in one of those rooms. You wouldn't know it for ten days. Yeah, for ten days. It just depends on what you want to do, uh, what kind of accuracy you're looking at. But you can get some gas guns. There are a bunch of people out there uh, that are making gas guns that will that will go side by side with. They'll go side by side with your bolt guns until you start talking about minute of angle. Until you start talking about those smaller shots. Once you start, you know, because this is what everybody does. They take a fucking e silhouette. And they put it at a thousand yards, or they put it, you know, eight hundred yards. You're not shooting minute of angle. You're just not. You're shoot. You get that whole target to hit, and when you hit the target, you're like, oh, "That's good. It's a hit." That's not how. That's not how minute of angle works. So, if you want to talk, if you want to talk minute of angle at a thousand, you're ten get ten a, inches. Get around. Get around fucking ten inch plate, mm -hmm. and stick it out there, and listen for the ding. It's it's uh it becomes a little bit now you want to start reducing that you know because if you have a if you have a minute of angle gun you're you're still pushing the edges even if you're fucking perfect you're pushing the edges so the the you know the more the more narrow you can create that the the smaller the the smaller the group size 
the better off you're going to be at longer ranges. Anyways, you, know, we got, you can get it. We have we have listeners from all over the place. Like some of them, some of them aren't even gun guys, right? I know, like I know you're like, what the fuck? Um, exp- no, get just the, explain, guys in England. Explain no. in a couple sentences, like what men of angle actually is. The, gun guys don't. Uh, this is how I get Jeff to tell me things I don't know. This explain gun, what men of angle gun, actually is. You know, is. those the guys are from England. They're not allowed to have guns. They, they can't, can't even have, have knives. knives. Yeah, uh-huh. like butter knives and shit. Yeah. So basically, a minute of angle is one. So basically, your bullet will hit will hit a target that is one inch at a hundred yards. That is at every yard line. So at two hundred yards, your gun will only, will shoot two minutes of angle. At three hundred yards, your gun's going to shoot three minutes of angle. So if you have a target, if you have a target that is smaller, say for example, three hundred yards. If you have a target that is smaller than uh, three minutes of angle. You have a, I'm probably doing the math wrong, you have a 60% chance that you're not going to hit that target, even if everything is fucking perfect. Even if everything, if you do everything right, you call the wind right, you trigger control is perfect, and you fire at that target, your gun just doesn't have the capability of hitting that target. Because it's a minute of angle gun. Chances are, the, the reality is, Almost every single person out there, every single person, I don't care who it is, you can think of the best shot you know. Chances are, their gun shoots better than they do. There's just a really just good like, chance that their like, gun shoots better than they do. Just like, equipment's always better. Like, every kid riding a dirt bike wants to put fucking $5,000 in the suspension when really he should have just set his fucking suspension up to begin with. Yeah. So I mean, it's there's a there's a lot going into long range. There's a lot going into long range shooter. I do not uh, I do not profess that I am a long range shooter. I am not a long range shooter. I I am a graduate of Scout Sniper School and Marine Corps MSPF Sniper School like three times. I instructed at both those locations. I am not a long range shooter. Uh, you want to learn about long range shooting? You come out here and get with Kent Rush. He does. Long range shooting. Yeah, he does. His wife just beat him. Yeah, yeah, his wife just beat him. But you know what? That's one of those things that Kent doesn't tell the whole story. Uh He made her a total trick fucking gun. Like, he made her a total trick gun. It only fires on full moons. Yeah, he made her a total trick gun. (laughs) I am sure she's a hell of a shot, though. Um, But that's that's kind of my take on the whole thing. I'm not a long range shooter. Uh, So if you can get so if you can get a quarter minute gun. That that's fucking at, at three hundred yards. That's a fucking you know three quarter inch fucking group yeah. group. So if you're shooting at a twelve inch by twelve inch plate, you know you have more chances of hitting that. You're, but so you're the, technically wasting your money. My question is, the more money you put into a, a motor, right? The mm-hmm. tighter you make the motor, the higher the tall the the tighter the tolerance is. Now you got to run special gas. You got to do all kinds of bullshit. Is that the same with it's a the gun? The same like thing that? with the gun. The same thing with the gun. And once you. You're gonna to get to a point. You're gonna, okay, so you're gonna to get to a point of diminishing returns when you're buying a, a certain like. I was just looking at something about uh, seven miller seven millimeter Remington Ultra Mag. It has this fucking. It has this BDC, this ballistic coefficient that's really good. Like so, which means that bullet's gonna fly very well downrange. The problem with it, the fucking rounds, I mean, the rounds are like $72 a box. <laughs> so who who's going to go out and practice that? Who's going to practice that application if the ammunition is so expensive? It's kind of why, you know, like I tell guys, don't buy a 300 Win Mag if you're just starting out. You really, and I, I'm going to bite my own tongue, you really should start with with 6.5 because it's the because it has oh, low shit, recoil. I never thought you'd say that. You then you should start with two, two, three. Because it's low recoil. You can, you can buy a bitch and, and it looking fucking wind. savage rifle in five, five, six. It bucks the wind. But if you you know if you're if you're if you're you want to if the goal is to shoot if the goal is to shoot zombies then three oh eight or bigger. Here, if you're on a budget, if you're on a budget. You just get that Remington seven hundred PSS or whatever the fuck yeah, they call yeah, it today. Yep. Yeah. In five, five, six. Five, five, six. And shoot. you just and at, you just shoot at 300, but you shoot a six-inch paper plate. Yeah, get a. It'll be the exact same thing as shooting. It'll be the exact same shing as shooting a 308 at 600. That's the other thing that you have. You, there's just a lot to take in consideration when you start getting into this. It's kind of like uh, 
I want to shoot long range. I want to shoot some long range. But really, now that I'm here in Tennessee, there's really nowhere to do it. Yes, there is. I mean, there is, but you got to. It's one of those shoot, things. You can shoot as far as you want once we got the tower up. Well, <laughs> once we get the tower up, there's just you know what I'm saying. You got to you got to you got to tailor you got to tailor your capabilities to what's available. You know, it, it made sense to have a it made sense to have a fucking ultra long range gun in California because I could go to Barstow like a fifty. Yeah, and I could shoot two miles and it would be no problem. Nowadays, it's just for helicopters. Here, it's not. I'm like I'm. I'm like ninjing around my property trying to get 300 yards. You better take some fucking head strippers with now, you. Now that, my neighbor, now that my neighbor has said I could put targets on his property anywhere I want, I'm still only, you know, I'm still maybe 450. I know, Kent, you're going to say, you should just come down here and you could shoot 1,000 yards you all day. here two hours away. It's two hours from my house, Kent, and my time is way too precious. To go down there and shoot clay pigeons. We do need to go have dinner with them, though. Yeah. You keep saying that. Um, you know, I always hated cleaning guns. So, is there a program like I can buy a Lamborghini yeah. race car? Uh huh. And they they drop it off at the track, right? You don't ever get to possess oh, the I'm car. Sure. They take it to the track, and then when you crash it, they take it and fix it. Or if you don't crash it, they take it and put tires and oil and shit and everything. They do all the stuff, right? You don't have to even wash it. It just shows up washed. Ready to go. Yeah. Ready to go. <clears throat> you can't have it at your house because your driveway, um, you can't have a any angle. Like it's right. that yeah. low. It has that the wind low. balances and shit. Is there a rifle company that will do that? Like just deliver your gun and they take it out and clean it when you're done? I guarantee you <clears throat> that there are, I guarantee you that there are places where you go and you show up and your gun is in a safe there on the property and they hand you your gun and you go shoot it and then you hand it back to them and they put it back they clean it and put it back in the safe. I guarantee you there's places like so that. So I remember fuck, it had to be 20 years ago, right? Tim LaFrance. I remember him telling me he had that building down by SeaWorld. It was down like in that area by uh -huh. SeaWorld. And you'd go in there and it's this giant warehouse and there's all these shipping containers in there. But the shipping containers were like open, but they had chain link fences on the ends. Okay. And there was people in all of them. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? He's like, they're building AR-15s. Back when it was a mystery, yeah. right? Nobody fucking built AR-15s. No, nobody built back in the day. <clears throat> so he had these workers. It, he must have watched New Jack City because it's like he had he had some ladies in there with their titties out and shit so they couldn't steal the so, cocaine. Yeah, he steal. had people in there building ARs and I remember him telling me, he's like, yeah, we just have them sign non-disclosure agreements. I can keep you in court till Jesus fucking comes back. <laughs> fucking Tim, man. Oh, shit. Chris went over, so whatever that car is with, that you the mentioned. Maserati. The Maserati. Plugged in. Yeah, Chris went over there and <clears throat> and the car is parked out front and, and there's, there's a like fucking a USB cable. There's a fucking in the cable window. into the car, and he goes in there, and the computer's open, and the cable's plugged into it, and the computer's just doing shit like some Star Trek shit. It's like <laughs> buttons are going up, lights are going off, and Chris is like, what? "Dot Matrix printer sounds." He goes, "What the fuck are you doing?" And he's like, "Oh, I'm not doing anything." The the comp the the Italy in Italy, they're fucking checking my car out right now and tuning it. Chris is like, "They're tuning it." He goes, "Yep, they're tuning it right through the computer." Yep. Crazy. Um, Scully, ever been on an LCAC? Yes, I have been on an LCAC. I've been on an LCAC several times. I've even been on a broken LCAC that just sat out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean going like this. How'd that happen? Fucking engine burnt up somehow, and we're just fucking... I, I don't know how they do it anymore, but I was around when the LCAC first came out. God, I'm old. And they used to take a Connex box... And they would fucking strap a Connex box on the LCAC. Called hot boxing. And fucking put you inside this stupid box. And you would have to be in this box is while you were transitioning. in there or are you standing? That's some Starship I, I think the, shit. I think, the first ones, I think the first ones were just cans. I don't think there were seats or anything. So how many bodies? Uh, it, was a 20, it was only a 20 footer. So I think my, I mean the whole platoon was in there. So there's 16 guys in there. Well, those holding Abrams. No, not at four Humvees. Oh, oh, wait a minute. LCAC, yeah. L LCAC will do, I want to say it'll take two Abrams. Really? Yeah. Oh. They're big. Yeah. I mean, they're they're big. I mean, there's they had... It'd be cool to have one here. Humvees, we just, we'd water buffaloes. We'd start it up and then drive it to one side of the property and then 
drive it back. Because <laughs> that's all you could do with it. We could drive it right out onto the lake. Not from here you couldn't. Oh, oh yeah, we forest could. in the way. Yeah, we could. We'd just go right out here to the highway, turn, mm. right out. What Maybe happens bump if, you off drive, the bridge? if you drive over a car with it? The car's fine, right? I mean, it might get a little scratched. Yeah. Because uh, it skirts. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what Have happens. Have you seen the civilian fucking hovercrafts? No. They're pretty neat. So it's like center seat joystick. And you can you can get different ones, but you can fucking ride two up. Like it has like razor seats on it and shit. And it'll nose dive down and you can set it down and then you fucking power up and it fucking noses up. And you dude, you can go over water, you can go over fucking dirt, everything. It makes a hell of a cloud. But they're they're pretty cool, man. I've never seen so they're pretty particular about where they go ashore. So, like, in all the videos, they're like, yes, it'll fucking go over small trees and shit, and they show them going over trees and stuff. But would it go over K-rails on the freeway? Yeah, maybe, yeah, I think. That was always my, like... I think it would. When we were building all the bumpers on the Blazer, Mix like, what do you what do you want? I go, I want... I showed him, like, 20 pictures. I go, but really, I want to be able to nose up on a K-rail catch the wheel pull that fucking front corner up teeter catch the back wheel and drive over a k-rail hmm. yeah i think I, maybe it would it would go over it i mean i, I don't we know, know. Uh, we know an m60 tank won't well it will if you know how to do it properly he didn't know how to do it properly he died right there on that fucking k-rail yeah. Yeah. um Got my ship notice for 145368. Now I'm in USPS stalker mode. Following <laughs> package to Pennsylvania. Thanks for the great product. Also use your Amazon link whenever I can. Thank you for using the Amazon link. Um, we got all kinds of weird shit going on with packages right now. I've seen like 10, 15 dudes posting on Facebook that they ordered. Like they're, they're in New York, right? Or Florida. They ordered. Their package went from us to Jackson to Memphis and then to California. Like, their their packages are moving hmm. all over the fucking wrong direction right now. It's weird. Uh, John, I can fly the plane. I've seen Top Gun twice and spent Christmas at the airport once. Rob, you motherfucker. Because when I read that, I'm like, all right, we got a dude. And then I read your other sub, your other, and I'm like, mm, I, I'm more qualified than that. Um, do a couple turn and burns, then stay on Maverick's wing and let him take you all the way in. Nothing to it. Um, well, my boy Mark... It's always the landing that's the problem. My boy Mark from Dump Box, he's got a Top Gun helmet, so he can definitely fly this plane. You know you can buy him, right? Does he have... But does Mark have a... Um, a call sign? He has a Maverick. Ma mm. it's, he has all the patches made mm. and everything, man. Hey, John. When you're working out, do you... His, he actually named his son Maverick. The new oh. baby's name is Maverick. Oh, my God. Dump box. You were hilarious. Hey, John. When you're working out, do you listen to music or podcasts? What's the playlist look like? It's mostly rap, Eric. Um, Pandora. I know there's all kinds of other shit out there. YouTube's pushing you to buy their black thing and all that shit. Um, I use uh, Pandora Rob Bailey channel. Um, I've been listening a lot to g Easy. This channel, uh, 50 Cent channel, uh, Tech Cent. Nine, um, a lot of Cottonmouth Kings, Suburban Noise, stuff like that. Um, but rap, man, fucking um, uh, T Grizzly. Lots and lots of T Grizzly channel and shit like that. But rap, always rap. That's how it's been for ever. Ever. I don't know how he listens 30 to years. Shit. DMX. I wrote some of DMX's raps for him. Summer's coming. Time for a tool bag production run. Please do at least one purple for the wifey. I need at least one more. Fire, 1777. Send an email, bro. Yeah, send an email. That's how that, we just ran, oh, you, uh, we can say it. We just ran yeah, black right with you... red-handled tool bags today because a dude sent an email in last night. Yep. Um, what else did we run? Uh, Multicam black crossbody bags. Yep. There was some other cool shit. Oh, black modular spent mags. Black modular spent mags. There's... Typhon uh, day packs. Day packs. There's uh, the multi-cam fucking uh, what's call it? Aprons. We're talking about farm equipment at work, and did a search on my iPhone and had an advertisement for balers and all kinds of shit. Only way possible that could have happened is my phone was listening to us. Fuck yeah, it's way beyond that, man. Your television is listening to you if it's on the net. 
um, all your smart TVs. Anything that's anything, anything that's as soon smart. as they go 5G, as soon as they go 5G, the way 5G is going to work so well, and and it, they say it's a huge health hazard. There's some crazy shit if you really look at it. But all your light bulbs, all of those appliances, everything that's 5G on the net is also a rebroadcast. Anything that anything that says smart on it will be able to <clears throat> rebroadcast. It'll be able to fucking listen to you. To like John just said, the fucking light bulbs. The beautiful thing about that is you're going to be able to do anything you want in your home with your phone. Faster than you've ever been able to do. Yeah, faster. You're going to be able to do anything you want in your home. The bad part about that is, is like all the technology that's come out in recent memory, is none of it's going to be secure. And that 12-year-old across the street, he's going to be like, watch, I'm going to turn TV off. Watch, I'm going to turn the light on in the kitchen. And you're going to be like, what the fuck is going on in my house? And it's just, it's just the way it is. The assisted living homes in my town are horrible. The people that run them don't care about the patients, and the families call all the time about the staff neglecting their family members. Every time I go to one for a call, I feel like I'm, a, I'm in a funeral home with people just waiting to die. Because that's exactly what's, what's happening. That's what's happening. That's yeah. exactly what that is. Families put them in there to just wait for them to die. Hey man, wear respirators and chemical googles. You mean goggles? Uh, with those sprays. Eyes absorb skin and nose, of course. What sprays? Uh, oh, probably your poison that you're spraying all over. I've, I don't ever wear. I don't either. Any of that stuff. And I know you should. Don't. I'm not. Yeah. I, I, you know, I know you so should. So we went to, um, when we bought, when we bought the, um, X Mark mower, they gave me this sprayer for free. You spend 12 grand on a the mower, they give you a free sprayer. Yeah, why not? So, it's cool. It's way better than any other sprayers I had that say Roundup or whatever the fuck's on them. Um, but it, it recently failed. Something I don't know what happened to it. So I've got like three sprayers here. One's like glued closed. You can't get in it because the Thompson's water seal. Yeah, yeah. And the other one, you put it on and it leaks down the back of your leg. And the other one leaks down your back. So I'm like, fuck it. Let's go. We'll just buy another one of these rigs. We've bought a couple of those, those nicer ones. We go in there and she's like, we don't have those. Okay, are you getting more? She's like... I don't know. I don't think you got that here. Yeah, yeah, we got it here. So I'm like, fuck it. Okay, I don't have time to go to Lowe's. Let's go to Walmart. They'll have something. So they have a battery-powered one. 100 bucks. I'm like, hmm. That's always where it breaks us, where you pump it up. You yeah. know, it's always leaking something to do with that bullshit. So I get the battery-powered one, charge it up, turn it on, and like the first two minutes, I'm like, this mucker, this fucking thing shoots like eight feet. Holy <laughs> shit. Like, this is a game changer. How in the fuck have we been... This literally... I sprayed everything that normally... And you use less material, too. Like, it sprays. Everything's fucking wet. You can just... Like, you just... You hold it, man, and it just does it. And I sprayed everything that would normally take, like, an hour. I did everything in, like, 30 minutes. Everything on the property I wanted sprayed. One tank. And it's still a four-gallon tank. So I'm like, man, if only these took DeWalt batteries. They don't. Of course not. So Justin Brooks is like, this is the one you want. So he shows it to me. It's like 300 bucks or something. But it has all kinds of... It does, it's like a fucking robot, man. It, it, it has all these lights on the side. And it's got red lights and blue lights and all kinds of shit. He's like, dude, I've, I've had one of these. I've been using it for like eight years. It's fucking awesome. They're fucking killer. How right? much is it? Like three hundred bucks. Three hundred bucks. That's what I was gonna get. But it'll. It says it sprays like twelve feet. Hmm. We could. We could hit Tyler. Like yeah. we could spray Tyler from the front door and round him up. And round him up. But uh, it, it sounds well worth it to me. You gotta clean it out, but I mean, yeah. we could. It'd be great for like spraying Thompson's water sealer on the build on those two sheds. On the sheds, definitely. Fucking yeah. stain the, the fence and. Yep. Episode 87, you mentioned Strip Club Rescue, a TV show. Discover is the wrong channel to pitch that to. I, it would be a great Cinemax or HBO. For the people who are bitching about there never being any registered open, any registers open at Walmart, call corporate in Bentonville, Arkansas, and complain. If enough people do, they will listen. Be sure to have the store number you are complaining about when you call. Anyone stocking shelves will be able to give you the store number. There we go. The other thing too is just if you, if you really if that's really your 
your hold up for the day is you want to you want to talk to a person and not a robot just go just go to, over to the phone grab the phone and be <laughs> like hey i want to speak to the manager when the manager gets up there go hey let's get some of these registers open they're going to open registers because walmart is the customer's always right so they'll open a register for Walmart you. rotisserie chickens. My wife cuts it all off the bone, chops it into small pieces, and bakes it with ziti mozzarella sauce. I'd kill Ooh, 10 good. guys for a play that. Yeah, that's fucking, that's awesome. So the, the, the easier way to do that, guys, get it when it's warm. When you, when you first get them, they are fucking burning, burning hot. Even when you get them home, they're still pretty hot. Let them cool just a little bit. Put on rubber gloves, latex gloves, surgical gloves and fucking pull that bitch apart. It is so fast to break them down at that point, and you can pull the gristle and the bone and everything out, and you have a plate of fucking just great meat, and then you can do whatever you're gonna do with it. And they've got like lemon pepper and garlic and all kinds, like we, we cause they never have enough of them. We always ended up getting like two of this or one of that, mm -hmm. and we just get a plate of meat. I'll eat all the brown, all that dark meat. You can have all the rest of that other bullshit. Top two zombie killing machines. Minefield clearing vehicle. Oh, with the rake thing. I love yeah. those things. Transformers had one. An industrial wood chipper. Anyone else got something to add? Huh. Those both sound really good. I mean, anything that... Anything that... Like that swamp buggy that, or that swamp crane they have down there that has those big fucking... It's a giant tank. It's tank yeah, tracks. That, anything, with, anything with some really good tracks on it and shit that'll just crunch I want, over. I want some property that requires us to use that. Well, then that means you gotta buy some swamp land over in Brewston. Oh, yeah, it would work there. Did you see uh, Green Force? No. <laughs> he was, I don't know what he was doing, but he was out. he was out by his mailbox and he's doing this video, but... It's one of those driving by his front, just like right down the road. One of, <laughs> one of those things. I'm like, he's going into a swamp somewhere. Top to you, uh, John and Scully. Thanks for these podcasts. I've been following SOE since I was a young teen, about 14 or so. I will be 25 years old in a little less than one month. In podcast 88, you said, oh, well, I'm thinking of that. So I was watching a video. Um, watching a video? One that we planted some trees and there's a video of it she put up today. So I knew we'd done one a couple weeks ago, so I'm scrolling back, and it only shows me like four videos, and then it says, see more videos. So I scroll through those, and it says, see more videos, 1,000 plus. <laughs> like, I don't know how many fucking videos we have there, but I was already through like 50 of them, and there was still 1,000 more plus. Um, 88, you said that everyone is contagious. The, there's, these are literally the exact words I've used to try to, and motivate others I have worked with under three different employers. Anywhere from dumb, lazy 19-year-olds fresh out of high school to 54-year-olds who worked at the same sandpaper factory for 17 years. I never in my life has thought that there was a sandpaper factory. I would like to see that. Like, I'll I can't believe there's one, if there's one still in the United States. I would always... He did say sandpaper, right? That's yeah, it, sandpaper is. factory. That's fucked. I'd like to see that. I would always say... That your attitude is contagious, so make it a positive one. At the time, I was working two jobs at the same time. One at the sandpaper factory, driving a forklift from 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. Then I would go home and catch four hours of sleep to be at my local Walmart to stock shelves for another seven hours. Again, only sleeping another four-hour nap before going right back to the sandpaper factory to do it all over again. And always with a smile on my face. Thank you very much for reinforcing what I already know and for challenging myself and others to change their mindset. That, that's it. You, you'll hear it also said as like um, uh, a bad seed, you know, or a rotten apple rots the rest of them, or, you know, it's cancerous, you know. That, that's exactly what that is. That's what we're talking about. If you get a, if you got a really good crew of 10 people running and then you get kind of a sour one in there, they'll sour the rest of them. Like you've got to fucking... Hire fast, fire fast. Like, that's that's what you got to do. Um, John, thanks for reading and discussing my long-winded comments about on that video. Both of you guys made good points, and I'll take those to heart. Funny how everyone who hates SOE says John Willis is an asshole, yet you're spending your time answering questions, giving advice, and just being a good human. Thank you very much. You can still be an asshole, though. People say I'm an asshole? Yeah. I didn't notice I was busy doing fucking real shit. 
Um, awesome podcast, guys. Hey, John, since you got screwed out of your K5 Blazer, we could build, you could build you another one and make it better than ever. Well, I, I actually have a, I bought a, a 91 uh, Chevy Suburban. I, I still have it. It's got a lot of shit done to it. I actually need to sell it if somebody wants to buy a, well, it's a 91. I mean, it has all the, all the problems that come with a 91 truck. No, it has power windows. Oh, I think it does, yeah. Has, I, I put a lot of money into it, it uh, but it's still a, a 91 truck. Um, I could be a, it could be a cool project for you, Cody, and Scully to work with on the weekends. Cody has my Yukon. Yeah. Cody has a lot of projects yeah, right now. Cody's got some projects. And he's Cody, got some fires, Cody, huh? Cody has some shit he needs to get rid of, too. Cody has the Yukon. Um, I believe it only drives in reverse right now. It's on its <laughs> yes. third transmission that third he turn. has put in it. He bought a Mustang to uh, work on or do something with, right? And then uh, it, the, there was a storm. And it flooded. And it flooded, and the water ran through the Mustang. So I'm like, you need to cut your fucking losses right now. That thing's only getting worse. Get rid of that fucking thing. Um, or just find one in good condition and get an off-road place to custom build it for you. Then the shoe would be on the other on another foot for that one that screwed you out of to start with. Nah, I ain't worried about none of that, man. Uh, anyway, just a thought. Keep up the good work, guys. Thank you for all you do for us. Right on, man. Thanks for listening. I just bought a Coyote shotgun card. My first order for SOE product. Will you do me a favor and tell my buddy Curtis to get back to work? Curtis, get back to work. What? Oh. Are you talking about Curtis here? Curtis hasn't worked here for fucking two years, are, probably. Are you talking about, yeah, Curtis Curtis? <sighs> Dirty Curtis? Dirtis Curtis. Maybe he's uh, back at work. Uh, John, if you're interested in buying a plane, find a small helicopter. You can buy a brand new one for well under 50000 small enough to fit in your garage. Um, I have a pretty big garage. I can put a real helicopter yeah, in our garage a, here. Magnum P.I. bird in there. Ha ha, Scully. Please make a Walking Dead movie with your giggle like a two-year-old uh, and running over zombies with an M1. It would just be so much fun. That's the problem with it. It would be too much... The zombie apocalypse would just be literally too much fun for me. My God, that would be the funniest thing. So I actually sent an order to um, a dude in his notes. Said mentioned something, and he works for tanks, right? He's a tank battalion or something. Uh -huh. I'm like, hey man, we need a right, SOE M1 Abrams. You can do it. This is this is what I'm saying. Look, they might actually be because six six Apaches flew over today. They yeah. might be thinking there's a tank here. But you can do it. This is all you got to do. This is just just. Every day, take one of those extra parts and just just go set it outside the fence. The reality is the M1 Abrams is, is long in the tooth and it's getting ready to be replaced. I'm sure the Army has a tank that's invisible that, they are, that they're ready to fucking put out in the field. They'll have a tank. It's, it's, why, it's why you can get an M1 Abrams in Egypt now, Turkey. You haven't seen the, the hybrid Apache? And Iraq. Abrams? So they're gonna, it's gonna get replaced, which means they're gonna, all those M1 Abrams are gonna end out, end up on bombing ranges somewhere, and then my little, my little buddies in Twenty Nine Palms will be sneaking out there in their rat rides, taking parts off those motherfuckers. And I'll be like, send them to me. Hey John, well we got dudes that are truckers. We can just have a part put on the truck and just yeah. brought on over. Hey John, I'm a contractor down in the Panhandle of Florida. Hurricane Michael was just upgraded to a Cat 5. I didn't even know there was any hurricanes going on. My question is, any ideas for ladder covers for a 24-foot extension ladder and 8-foot step ladder? Why would you want a, a cover. ladder cover? I've never heard of a ladder cover. I don't, I don't know. Uh, carrying them on the ladder rack produces a lot of drag and high pitch whistle. Boy... You put a fucking Cordura cover on that motherfucker. There's gonna be some noise. Yeah, there's gonna be even more noise. That's literally I have I have a uh, Yakima racks for the top of most of the trucks, bars, uh, carbon fiber, you know, fucking pods and shit. They're not actual carbon fiber. They're you know they just look like it. Um, they're fucking loud, so fucking loud, and they cut your gas mileage so much. We actually took those off of the excursion. Um, <laughs> Carrying them on the ladder rack, uh, high pitch whistle. I have looked on the web and have found nothing. Would love for you to tackle this and produce a badass cover, but total understand the workload and current have and not wanting the R&D and build. Just would love to get your thoughts on the material and possible designing. 
I was thinking elastic slip over cover with an insert to give it a rigid top and some type of bungee straps for bottom around the ladder. Man, I might, I'm, maybe I just, I'm, maybe I'm looking at it wrong, but I would think it would just fuck it up, man. I wouldn't think that it's, it's an ideal. Uh, slant Omatic Singer Model 503. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> I'm sure it's a sewing machine, but it's, yeah, that's about 503. Are you talking Slant Omatic, like because it's it's a bunch of uh, Mama Sans in the sew shop, or are we talking it's it's, it's actually that's a model? Wow. I don't know. Um, great video, and to Josh, stay with nursing. I'm an old guy, but I'm not done yet. I would be surprised if I had one or two emergency room visits left in me. Needless to say, I expect to need quality medical people in my future. Stay the course. Be the best you can. Yeah, you can't go wrong in the medical field. I mean, even if even if society collapses tomorrow, you're going to be in high demand. So you just can't go wrong with that type of with that type of background. And and here's the thing: nurses do everything. Yeah, they do all nurses the doctor do, shit. Nurses do everything. Doctors just approve shit. I just I was listening to a thing the other day where uh, this doctor was talking about um, drawing blood. I think he was talking about drawing blood, and the person was like, "I'd rather really have you do it than than the nurse." And the doctor's like, "No, you don't. No, you don't. You I don't ever do it." She does it every single day. You want the professional to do it. That's I'm not the person to do that. Josh replies, says, Thanks so much for the words of advice. Sometimes I just need someone to tell me to get my head out of my ass and press on. As of the time of this writing, I will begin my last semester in a week. Funny enough, rumor has it that I am the benchmark that everyone weighs their own progress. I excel in my coursework, and everyone else just sees themselves being being lagging further and further behind they get mad because they can't figure out how i excel in nursing school while married with a child and still find the time for personal fitness i go to the gym on the days i have to go to school and i go on the days when i'm not when i don't all they do is complain about not having the time because they're too busy getting drunk in all their off time they ask me what my secret is, I throw them the John Willis, do good, go do good shit. Most of the ones who want to do that, I don't aren't do what I don't what I do aren't willing to work that hard. Also, nursing as a whole sits about eight percent males. Um, Josh, reach up there and uh, grab your nuts out of your fucking ass and uh, slam them in the door, and then fucking turn around and kick one of them chicks in the fucking cunt hockey style <laughs> cunt punt right there. That's some frightening shit. Um, fuck them, man. Who who gives a shit? Like, just keep doing what you're doing. You don't have time for that bullshit. Yeah, I, I don't even worry. I, I I know it's hard when you're in the. It's that thing where you're surrounded. You're in the sewing circle and you're surrounded by the sewing circle. And every day you're trying to get your shit done and the sewing circle's there and it's just getting smaller and smaller. It I I can see how that's difficult. But just. You're you're doing what you need to do to get out of there and do better for your family, dude. If you worry about those motherfuckers, if you weren't married, they'd be fighting over which one was gonna fuck you next. Fuck, fuck them, yeah. man. I'd have every one of them bitches fucking pregnant and making pornos. Fuck them. Um, I'd have them fucking paying me to fuck the other chick. Guys, new idea for the hundredth episode: record it inside a stripper's butthole. Okay, well you will find. I like butthole porn. If you've got a if you got a butthole that you can even get a foot inside, I would definitely look at it. Just uh, go ahead and start filming that VMC Wolverine. Also, Ching Chong, your religion is wrong, and hippity hippity, get off my property. Laugh out loud. What is he fucking talking about? Who knows? Here's another one. In uh -oh. response to previous Wolverine. comment, I'm the one who lost the 40 pounds. John and Scully, I'm waiting, wanting to join the military. I know I need to lose more weight besides 40 pounds. Slowly but surely, I'll lose the weight so I can join. I'm looking at two branches to join, which are USMC and US Navy. The Navy, because my stepfather, who was a helmsman in the Nimitz, and my uncle, who was an MP in Vietnam, he carried a shotgun with flache shells and loved the whorehouses in the Philippines. The Marines, 
for because it's the Marines and everybody loves Marines because they can get shit done. How old are you? Um, I guess is my question. Just hey, keep lose losing, the weight. Keep and, losing weight. Don't do it fucking yeah, so you can go lose, in the military. Lose the weight and flip a coin. Uh, yeah. The Navy's going to be easier. I'm just telling you. The Navy's going to be easier. Hey, John and Scully. I'm a police officer at a smaller department of 18 sworn and 4 non-sworn and a firefighter at my small part-time department. Do you live in Camden? That's how this is. I'm the one that had the girl cheat on me while I was in the academy and broke an ankle oh, so he's a, and had he's my a mom die. Good. The Then I left the girl about eight months ago. Now when I found out she was cheating, I graduated the academy just a few months ago and almost immediately broke my left ankle. They tried to get it set but found pieces of bone floating in the joint continuing to tear things up. I had my surgery in January and just got back to work full time in March. I'm still not quite 100%, but I'm getting closer every day. The older of the two younger sisters is looking for a job now. I pigeonholed as much money away as possible and I'm cutting costs where I can. Things like cable and home phone are gone. I've raised insurance deductible on my car and put the other down to the lowest level liability possible and done as much as I can to save as much money as possible. We didn't get much for mom's life insurance, but I'm hoping to make it my new financial zero. I also just got a dollar an hour pay bump at work for getting off probation. Mom died at an unexpected time. She had some health complications due to her work and her lifestyle choices, mostly issues with joints and some light breathing problems. But my fifth sister found her when she came home from school. Doctor says she died of a heart attack. It's been about a month since she died and everyone is doing way better and things are getting easier as the days go by. New problems pop up, but they seem to be smaller and easier to manage. Thanks for the podcast. Man, it sounds like you're moving in the right direction. It, so it sounds like you're moving in the right direction, man. Some days are going to be better than others. You just you just got to keep going, man. It's it's what mom would want. Um, you can miss her, but you can't dwell on it. When you do, it's not going to make anything better. It's not going to be better for anybody around you. And uh, you just got to keep going, man. There's nothing. There's not anything more you can do about it. Just just you know, remember her. Talk to your sisters about it if they need to talk about it. And uh, just you got to keep going, man. That's yeah. Fuck. It's what life is all about. Nobody lives forever. John, does SOE still get large government contracts? We don't chase any contracts. If you, we get stuff. I don't know. Every couple of weeks, hey, bid on this or that, and we don't bid on shit. Um, the guys that want our stuff, they write it with our. They so they do a sole source. It has to come from us, even if it goes out to bid. All three or five or ten, whoever's bidding on that, um, they're all going to contact us for the part. So we, we still do some of that stuff, but we don't we don't chase a bid. Like if, if it's out there and they need it, I always say, I don't know why I always say gas mask. We haven't made a gas mask cover in fucking 20 years. But like gas mask covers. They want a gas mask cover, and they specifically ask for an SOE side open gas mask cover, then, you know, we'll put numbers and, and time delivery times and shit out there. But if they're asking for it and they're getting bids from fucking other manufacturers, we don't, we're not fucking with it. Um, for the record, a theocracy is a system of government in which priests rule in the name of God or a God. Also, the quote Scully uses at the end of Lord Acton is by Lord Acton, and originally, power tends to corrupt and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Great men are almost always bad men. A lot of people forgot that last part. It's usually just perspective. So it's always about perspective. Even when you talk about American history, it's about perspective. Yeah, guys, we were fighting. It's they always, weren't the bad guys. It's always perspective. It's it's what what is your perspective when you're talking about whether someone is a bad a good man or a bad man? The guy who went to jail for letting the horse go to pound town. Do we know what the horse was wearing? <laughs> 
Are we sure the horse wasn't asking for it? I'm sure the horse was asking for Bunch it. Bunch of fucking cock teases, I bet. Seriously, though, there was a case that made national news in Superior, Washington in 2007. A guy was arrested for fucking a dead deer on the side of the road. Weird thing is... He was found guilty in April 2005 of felony mistreatment of an animal after he killed a horse with the intention of having sex with it. He was given one year probation and a sex offender evaluation and treatment at the Institute of Psychological and Sexual, Sexual Health for the Dead Deer. Are we concerned he's going to transition to humans? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know that that would be a concern. I mean, let's say the it deer... Would, I would think it'd be easier to fuck it. Let's say the, the deer... I mean, if the deer got hit by a car... And you're fucking and it. And he just walked by and was like, I'm going to fuck that deer. Why would that be illegal? Maybe because it's out in the open? Maybe he's got to drag it into his van. Yeah. And then do it. But I think that would be more of a fish and game issue. It's just crazy. That, Wait, harassment of wildlife. Like, okay, the dude needs a psychological evaluation, definitely. Do we want him walking amongst us? There's, but, but to be in trouble for fucking the dead deer. The, <laughs> the issue, know, you know, man. when you say that, do we want do we want him walking amongst us? They're everywhere. They're walking. They're every, they're, and, they're, and there's there's crazy shit. I don't care until yeah. I know. Stop yeah. fucking telling me. I don't care until you're in my yard fucking my dog. I... I <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. If you're a chick and you want to come over and fuck my dog, I don't think I'd. I don't think I'd be mad about it. Hmm. If you came home and your dog was railing some fucking the blonde neighbor, oh, I would definitely videotape it. I mean, oh, is that illegal? Well, yeah, is that, is that the yeah. There's part? a federal crime, buddy. Is that the federal? Yeah. I, isn't it just distribution? Could I videotape? What if I was no, videotaping? No, it's manufacture. What if I was videotaping, but while I was videotaping, I was like, I'm just trying to gather evidence for the police when they come because you're harassing my wildlife. It's, I'll bet you. I'll bet you it's manufacturing. Probably. There's probably some crazy shit. The you Amazon do. warehouse near where I live had such a high turnover rate with kids out of high school. They had to spend two million bucks to install air conditioning in the warehouse and starting wage of twelve dollars an hour. What they're doing now, what Amazon does now is... Um, Robots. Lots of them. Well, they... No. Old people. Lots and lots of old people. Walmart greeters. There's all these old people that... There's all these old people that have their little RVs and they drive around the, they drive around the country all year long. And they migrate to these... At the big holidays, they migra migrate to these Amazon centers and they'll just work the big holidays and back in their RVs and away they go. A lot of uh, Amazon centers have built these you know rv parking areas close by to the center so these people you know these old people can just yeah go I heard and walmart. work for 12 hours i heard walmart's no longer like a no-go now you oh, yeah, can't the... just pull up and park there anymore yeah i think i think they're i heard several things it's weird because it... some of them maybe my well my walmart when you drive in there and i just noticed this I, it may have been there forever, but I just noticed the sign. It's, it says, no overnight parking in the parking lot. But it, it doesn't matter when you go to our Walmart. The, the lanes that are closest to the gas station, there's always four fucking semi-trucks in that just parked in there. So, I, I don't know. It's weird. What, 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 what are you going to do? give a shit? I mean, yeah, why would you care? If they're not well, leaving you know trash... What? It's probably because of all the people that, because it's really big in it's really big in California now, where people buy a piece of shit RV that can't really drive, and then they put it on the street right in front of your house, <laughs> and then they just stay there. I bet they're doing Airbnb. The, I'll bet they're doing the same thing at Walmart parking lots. Here's a lovely story from doing deliveries. We got a call to remove a freezer from a lady's driveway. Ooh. When we get there. We go to move it, and it's way heavier than it should be, and the lid is screwed shut. <laughs> oh, God. We ask the lady what's in the freezer because we don't remove refrigerators with rotted food. She tells us it is just ice buildup. And like fools, we believe her. After all, she's a nice old lady. We get to the next delivery, and the door of the freezer has fallen off and is about a 100 pounds of rotted meat in the form of steaks 
half chickens and every other conceivable cut has spilled onto the deck of the delivery truck. We spend the next two weeks trying, trying everything we can think of to try and get rid of the smell, but it seems they have soaked into the wooden deck of our truck. We try baking soda, whole bottle of soap detergent, everything and anything we can think of. It's also the height of summer, which just adds to the wonderful smell. After about two weeks, we decide to try fabric softener and we dump an entire bottle in the back of the truck and somehow that got rid of the smell. People are fucking disgusting and you don't realize how disgusting until you deliver to their homes. Thanks for the podcast. Keep it up. Uh, there's an enzyme that would have gotten rid of that. Our yeah. dude Bill can yeah. tell you what that is. Yep, he, um, he used to do that for a And living. the next time you're going to use the word fuck, you better fucking spell it out and not these little asterisks, whoever and you are. Man, I, this is, what are we, 2019? I don't care who it is. A little old lady, an uh, eight-year-old kid, a fucking, you know, 95-year-old man. You don't ever take a refrigerator or a freezer that is fucking screwed shut <laughs> there is no re that is there's no fucking it reason could be to an do IED. that could be all kinds of shit you don't take the you what, open what that motherfucker up what could it be uh, you didn't see her husband did you oh good point <laughs> speaking of shooting without hands i saw a guy that was missing an arm shoot a 55 pound compound bow with his mouth Basically a retainer and used his tongue with a trigger. That is some crazy shit. That is crazy shit. At Whole Foods, an old rich lady would buy six chickens for her dogs every week. People like their pets more than their people. Yeah, they do. Definitely. There's a bunch of, uh, there's actually several billionaire pets uh, where billionaires have died and they've left, left the all their the fucking money to the cat, the dog, whatever. There's, there's some pets out there that are worth a lot of money. I totally agree about assisted suicide. I say that after helping my grandpa with dementia over the last six months, which turned out to be the last six months of his life. Yeah, if you've ever been down the, you know, uh, my grandmother on my mom's side had dementia. And if you go down that road, it is fucking terrible. And the worst part about it was she was, she was fucking, there was nothing physically wrong with her strong heart strong lungs str she was fucking like the, the doc you know when my mom would go visit doc would say she's fucking strong as a horse but wouldn't, wouldn't she get loose and then go to a bus stop <laughs> she would get she would get naked and walk down to the walk down to the street and sit on a bench waiting for the bus now this bench was just one of those uh in honor of Thelma Louise or whatever bench that no bus would ever come but every time she disappeared that's where they would go they would walk out there and she would be sitting on the bench naked waiting for the bus because she's going to go into town uh it just could and you, it's the could, you, could you take her to town would she be mm -hmm. fine if you took her to town like and then brought her back could you take her out for a couple hours? Because she didn't. She so. So she didn't remember. At that point, at that were. point, she didn't even know who my mom was, or she you know, she didn't even recognize my mom. So yeah, it gets that when you get down that road, it's it's pretty bad. And, and my mom would go visit her all the time. She moved her up to a place right next, right close to her house. And as bad as she was, my mom's like. There's 25 people in there that are worse than she is, that can't feed themselves, that can't, that are just worse than she is. So, dementia is a terrible, that, I mean, getting old is terrible. They, I hope they come up with a pill, because I'm going to be popping it, motherfucker. Never understood that on Walking Dead, just set off huge alarms to get them on the interstate, line them up a couple of Abrams, and just run them all over. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, the, the show was... The show was a soap opera. I mean, that, that's the that's the thing that most people don't understand is, you know, The Walking Dead, all these shows. The what's that one you watch that has fucking dragons? It's just Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. I haven't, I haven't seen a fucking they're Game all, of Thrones in four years. I made a video about that this morning. As a matter of fact, they're all just soap operas for the modern for the modern consumer. That's all it is. It's just General Hospital because if you look at them rationally, especially like that one, you could have. 
as long as they had been running around Atlanta, you could have already created this utopian society that was completely zombie free. But we needed to create the drama, and the and the drama is what kept bringing people back. So it's just a it's just a soap opera. Scully, thoughts on the FP forty five Liberator? FP forty five Liberator is that the is that the two? Is that I, I feel like that's the two, the two guns. He asked some something else. Here. It's crazy. John, can you tell us about how you put a hole in a ship with a Mark twenty three while your business was based out of California? Mark 23, the SOCOM pistol, or is there another fucking weapon that's the Mark 23? I would assume it's a SOCOM pistol, but... I don't know what he's talking about. I had an ND on a ship. But it was blank. It wasn't a it real was bullet. It was blank, and it wasn't a Mark 23. Um, John, you talked about it's how... MP4, that's how old John is. He's MP using an MP4 submachine gun. This was before the MP5. John, you talked about how you liked having skeletons of animals and other things, and how you would like to have aborted fetuses amongst your display. If you could have the statue Tony Podesta has of the one of the Dahmer's victims, would you? Um, I don't... I, I mean, I definitely know what that is. I know a thousand percent what you're talking about, and yes, that's what that was. But no, I don't like that statue. I don't. I don't like that fucking... Like, it's just like polished gold or bronze. I mean, no, it's not. I don't know. Uh, yellow Vest comment. Jack Spierko said in a Facebook video not to idolize the Yellow Vest protesters via their protesting because they aren't getting enough free shit. Scully Spierko has said the French have never met any motherfucker they weren't happy to surrender to. It's true. You know, most people don't realize this, but you know where the Arch de Trump, the Arch de Trompe, or whatever the fuck they call that, the, the one you see in the movies all the time in France. So, uh, if you look at the side of the streets, there it's it's lined with trees. It's lined with these big trees, and uh, most people don't understand that the reason why those trees are there is because the Germans don't like to march in the sun. <laughs> Yes, the French will surrender to anybody. <laughs> I'd watch Scully giggling and killing zombie TV series. I totally agree with the long-range caliber choice. Love my 338, but the 243 is so much more fun. To shoot and practice it, throw them out 800 yards. Yeah, it's easy. just it's just about what it's just about what your practicality is. I mean, the cool thing about the 338 is you're shooting a you're you can shoot a real heavy bullet through it, and because you can shoot that heavier bullet you're going to have less wind effect the further downrange you shoot. You know, obviously the lighter the bullet is, the the harsher the wind can the harsher the wind is going to affect that bullet and threw it all over the place. I mean, there was there was in, there was times in Mogadishu that we couldn't that the wind was blowing so hard, you know, at 500 yards, we couldn't shoot the 308s. Like it, it, it just there was not enough wind to put on the 308s. But you get that Barrett up there and fucking you're not even putting any wind on it because you're shooting that fucking 700 and whatever grain pill that fucking thing has the fucking i, I always like to call it the cleophas round uh you're shooting that motherfucker downrange and the green the, pit yeah the, the wind Ralphus, the rufus yeah cleophas because the wind won't fucking the wind won't touch that fucking heavy ass heavy ass pill going down range so you guys ever shoot api yeah what's that red silver yeah right? it's a red red silver tip the problem with so the, how do you explain this? Okay. Marine Corps order is no... You, the, no, the Marine Corps order is you cannot de-link any ammunition to shoot through the Barrett 50 cal at the time. So the only API would all be linked up for the fucking 50s. Did we de-link ammunition and shoot it through the Barretts? We most certainly did. Uh, but we were supposed to always be shooting the Cleophas or non-linked ammunition which was always Cleophas. So you never had like ammo from Barrett or any of those dudes uh, you know, everybody that spending that price. Yeah, every and, now and then you'd get like here's four rounds. Yeah, you get like four or five rounds, but I mean if you it doesn't did, you ever, did anything you ever blow anything up with a fifty? Yeah, yeah. What'd you blow up? Uh fifty five gallon drums of fuel. That's cool. How yeah, that's fun. What were they what? didn't like blow up, they just yeah. catch on fire and shit. Where were those? Like? That was in Kuwait. Uh, oh, hey! 
I, you know, everybody was talking about a good Staff Sergeant Terry story. You know, I will say, Staff Sergeant Terry, or First Sergeant Terry, I believe, I may be wrong, I believe he got a bronze star for this. So, Iraqis in a... I'm, I, may be, I may be thinking of the wrong vehicle, BTR-60. I, I want to say it's a BTR-60. Um... The Russians are the, the Russians are very famous for putting all their all their fuel system stuff on the back of their vehicles. So, you know, cuz we're fighting, you know, we're always fighting forward. Why would I why would I care about fucking bullets coming from the back? So, Staff Sergeant Terry is in the fucking in a in a fucking Humvee. They're in a fucking I want to say it was a BTR-60. Maybe wrong. But they're in this fucking armored vehicle, these Iraqis. And they are driving away from the Humvee. They're trying to get away from Staff Sergeant Terry and his crew of snipers who are just fucking hauling ass in this Humvee after this vehicle. He fires one round from the Barrett. It goes through the fucking back doors and hits the fuel cell and catches his fucking vehicle on fire. And 12 dudes surrender to him immediately. <laughs> Even though, you know, really, if they wanted to fight, they, they could have put up a good fight. But it's just... That's our Terry again. And that picture is there's a picture of the BMP on uh, at Sniper School. I want to say I want to say the one at Pendleton has it. So there's the Stats on Terry story. So you know how everybody used to wear the Citizen Aqua and dive watches. Uh huh. You could walk up and go, hey, let me see what, let me see your watch, and you just hold the two buttons in, and it would zero all your dive shit out. It would zero <laughs> all your stuff. You didn't know that? I didn't know that. Oh yeah, Lance used to do that to me all the time, and I'd fall for it every time. So. On the drop zone, you can grab a dude's chute and fucking throw it out, right? And fucking his chute all unpacks. Yeah. You ever do that on a fucking no. on a sniper rifle? Just walk. Out oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that turret, always. That turret. Always do that. As soon as you, you know, you at at school, you would. As soon as you were fucking them up, like if they if, whatever somebody was slow or whatever, you fuck them up. You, one of the instructors would just walk down the line and turn it. Because no one would check their fucking shit. They would just go to shoot and they'd be like, I can't hit, I, mean, I can't hit nothing. And you'd be like, would you check your dope? <laughs> and it'd be fucked up. But How do you check it without shooting? Bore well, side it? Well, so our fucking, our guns, so old school. Old school is because we had uh, uh, BCDs in our fucking scopes. It said 100, 200, 300. So you, when you, all you, all you really have to do is go like this. Just look up. And you can see that you're shooting at the 700 yard line, but your scope is on 300. Oh, okay. The seals, we, man, we they get so fucking mad because they're using total clicks. So they were using total clicks, and so you could just be like, <laughs> and it, you know, make that <laughs> noise. That's what I'm talking about. And then they're fucked because they got they got to go all the way down and count all the way back up. So they would get so fucking how mad. Click, how many clicks are in there from bottom to top? Oh, a million. I mean, there's a lot of clicks it's from like bottom three, to top. Yeah, that's 300. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure on the scopes uh, they were using, but it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. John, straight up bought mine to shoot. Uh, 338 is obnoxious to me, borderline stupid for me at least. I'm not a soldier or assassin or important. I plan on selling mine. My take is if I can't put it down with a 30 6 I have no business shooting it. Also, it is a thousand yards away. I have no business shooting it. Plus, with your 30 6 I don't know if it's still the case, but you can go buy those black tipped 30 6 Yeah, you, you can buy the the uh, AP. You can buy the armor piercing. I mean, there's there's companies now that that sh that make fucking. You can actually get Tons the Cleophis. You can get the Cleophis rounds. In thirty out six, and just load. So you can get API. What is it? API. Are you them loaded or just the already ones? loaded, man? They're expensive, but you can get all those funky bullets. I for thought you need a um, tax stamp for each one of those. Nope. Mm -mm. Straight up bought mine to shoot steel at eight hundred because it makes me giggle. Time of flight and time for the report to return, etc. I put a silencer co break and added ten ounces of lead to the butt. To the butt stock, it tames some recoil. Scope has some heft to it too, at least to where I'm okay shooting 25 to 50 rounds in a day. Hell, that's all I can afford in one sitting anyways. Yeah, brutally, fucking... Brutally loud though. 
keep on keeping on. Sincerely hope you enjoy. Uh, what up, guys? You've mentioned the accidents that you've seen or been in with the razors. What's the worst accident you've been or seen you know, on the streets? I've seen some shit like fucking split in half. I was in a Rambler that flipped over three times with my grandma. I don't even think I was wearing a seatbelt. We went off the side of the road, rolled three times. She got, my grandma asked her, she got glass all in her arm. It was, you know, the fucking, that glass that breaks into a million pieces. She got glass all in her arm. And I do not believe I was injured at all. She was so concerned that I had been hurt. And I don't even think I was wearing a seatbelt, because this was fucked, man. I was, I was probably about, I had to have been at least eight years old. And I don't think you, I don't think you had to wear seatbelts. And that fucking Rambler probably just had lap belts anyways. Um, and then the worst one I've seen, four people on a scooter. <laughs> Where was this Four at? people on a scooter in Thailand, all them motherfuckers in shorts and flip-flops. Man, they got fucked up. What hit him? Nothing. He just lost control. Yeah, he was gun. fucking hauling ass down this fucking road. Lost control, and they just fucking went... <clears throat> I mean, they were... Man, it was pretty bad. I Anyways. saw a dude on a motorcycle like a... I think it was a Katana. Not like a GSXR or something. You know? Semi-truck. Rear, rear yeah, wheels. Was... Rear wheels. Wheels were on top of him. He was on top of the motorcycle. Yeah, that's done. Yep. That's a done deal. All right, that's it. I got trees to plant. I, oh, got, 90 got, trees minutes. To I plant. got 90 minutes of daylight left. I got cake to work off. Hey, that cake didn't even fuck me up. That's the, You know, that's the first junk food I've had. I, you know, 90 days probably. I was sick to my stomach. Like, I actually, there was a moment where I thought I was going to go in the bathroom and just fl throw up. You should probably do that anyways. Just get it out. That's too late now. It's your, it's it's the, too, your it's, humors are off. We need some blood light. Yeah, it's too late I now. Have a it's thing, in there. I have a thing that I put on your arm and I wind it up. And it makes four little cuts in you, and you bleed profusely. To get, to get your humors back on, right? Yeah, it's a bloodletting. Yeah, that's fine. I like leeches better, but we'll go. I don't have any leeches. Well, we got to get some. We should maintain some. That'd be cool. What's in that aquarium, leeches? <laughs>